frying all over all over again bro the journey is not done um but yeah if you have any more questions or you just want to talk about your injuries down below feel free to do so you probably noticing where them crutches are huh they're gone <laughs> crutches are gone so welcome to week four this is week four i'm about to be well today is a month post-operation it's august 2nd so i've been cleared to get rid of the crutches and some more exciting updates so let's get into it bella what the heck bro so here are the full updates for week four it's different for everybody disclaimer your progress is not the same as my progress okay so here's mine i'm on the early weight bearing path like i said the previous week which was last week for weeks two and three all that means is that to start the healing process and to get back into athletic performance at a high level my orthopedic surgeon recommended i start putting weight on the foot early for everyone that looks different everyone has different level levels of athleticism and physique that's a huge part in it as well your weight and height and your athletic performance have a lot to do with which path you get put on. Huge disclaimer. So someone 40, 45, or a little bit older, they're not going to really be on early weight bearing because most 40, 45 plus year olds, while they may play sports, they're not athletic anymore. So they'll probably be on a conservative method. They probably won't have surgery. But if they do, take your time, dude. Like, that's, that's usually how the doctor approaches it. Now me, I'm 26. So my doctor put me on an early weight bearing plan. He knows I play basketball very frequently and help others with their basketball skill and acceleration in such aspects and areas. So I'm on early weight bearing. I just said the same thing in a long sentence. So I've been cleared to not only walk around everywhere with the boot on, um, but when I'm around my apartment and you know, in, in spaces where I'm not gonna fall or anything like that, I can walk around without the boot. I'm about to wean myself off the boot for the next two weeks. So it's already been almost a week. It'll be a week on two. Tuesday and then uh, after that the next Tuesday no more boot I'll be in shoes yeah. I mean it's the little things that count bro uh, everyone's progress is gonna look a little different so there's some people who may not be weight bearing until week six I'll have the boot off week six I will be in shoes week six everyone's different okay keep that in mind so I've, I've been able to walk around the house and practice my walking here's some clips of I mean I was able to stand and do the dishes of course in the boot but I've been able to like actually like put in some steps. So this first clip you'll see here, my steps aren't so fluid. This is day one of me out of the boot. It, as you can see, I'm doing the lunch lady walk. Today, you can tell that the walk is a little more fluid. So by next week, I should be walking pretty normal. Only thing is the strength is really not there yet. It's not at all. Like sitting down doing a seated calf raise, bruh. All I feel is the, the tendon doing this. All strength in my calf is left and you'd be you'd be surprised like six plus weeks without moving your calf not only is the muscle gone you can tell a huge difference in my calves the strength loss is ridiculous another update I've been cleared to like work upper body so here's some clips from my appointment uh, that I just had on Tuesday which was the end of July so July 30th I had my last post-op appointment the next ones will just be consultations with the orthopedic surgeon um, so this last post-op was basically outlining the steps going forward. So no more wedges in the boot, wean myself off the boot for the next two weeks, and then what it looks like going forward with driving and physical therapy and all that stuff. So here's some of those clips. Okay, so the next order of business here is start working on range of motion and stretching. So you should be at this point off crutches, cool. walking with the boot, no wedges. So I'd say we go two weeks with the boot, no crutches, normalizing your gait, but coming out of the boot and starting to do some range of motion. So I'll send you for some PT if you like, Yeah. and they'll get you going. Cool. And um, after two weeks, you just start, you go back into a normal shoot. Around the house, you can actually walk a little without the boot. You'll okay. start to kind of normalize your gait. And so, um, you know, you're, you're basically weaning yourself out of the boot over the next cool. couple weeks, a little bit at a time, okay? Awesome. You know, come back and see me in a couple weeks and start to actually go up, go down, mm -hmm do some home exercises. You can put a belt under your foot like this and stretch. You can get on a step and drop your heel. Just gently stretch a little bit. Okay. okay. Don't fill up with just a little bit of time. And then we'll go from there. No questions for sure. Um, I mean, you, your next, the next step for you is to just walk normally, no limp, totally smooth, without crutches, which you should start doing immediately. Cool. In terms of driving, how would that go? Um, yeah, I mean, you can't drive with a boot on. Of course, yeah. Um, so you would take the boot off, and you could probably start to drive now. Okay. You know? 
I'm gonna try it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, carefully, but that's yeah. probably fine. It's just the only thing is like the strength, probably. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, if you had to like slam on the brakes or something, I mean, potentially you might tweak it, but you know, I'll uh, go kart it. And go yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good idea. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, all's good. Looks great. Awesome. Season looks good. That's what matters. Last right. day of crutches, right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Anything? Um, you don't think it's healed long? Do you? I'm just paranoid about that. About what? If it's healed, like the tendon is healed long, you don't think so? Or? No. Because I haven't, like... Yeah, no, it's fine. I mean, you know, it, it, it kind of, um, you know, I just take the ends and put them together, so I restore the anatomy, then as it heals, it actually will get a little tight, oh, yeah. and you got to kind of stretch it out. It's, it's um, but um, I wouldn't worry about any, you know, it kind of resets its tension over time. Oh, okay. So you don't have to worry about that. Cool, cool. And then in terms of the gym, I was a heavy gym goer. <laughs> now I'm not. How would you suggest like readjusting to working lower body? Like stay away from like heavy squats, obviously. But yeah, like, I mean, for now you can go to the gym uh, with the boot, do upper body, um, and then I would, in terms of lower body, I would just work with a the physical therapist and have them work on your ankle. Stay away from lower body. Cool. Sounds good. That's all the questions I had. Okay. Um, I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Cool. Any problems? You let me know. Okay, no more crutches for sure. Cool. And um, any problems, of course, you know. All right, and start, like, you know, you get up here, and just put your heel down, just do a little bit of some Yeah, cool. Yeah, okay? All right, thanks, Zach. All right. So as he said there, I can drive. It's just going to be a little difficult with the strength factor. Um, and if I need to slam on the brakes, hopefully I don't. I'm probably just going to go-kart it and use two feet um, if it comes down to that. Get away from the cord, Bella. Get get away from. Look at look 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 at look at my face. Another thing he said was um, to start putting weight down on it outside of the boot. Now this helps accelerate that process. It's kind of like if the best example I can have um, patellar tendonitis, right? You don't stop movement completely. You do for a little bit to to start the healing, but then the real healing comes and repair comes when you start to do that uh, loading on it. So now I'm doing body weight loading of just walking around and um, my referral was put in for physical therapy. So physical therapy, my first appointment is August 14th, about two weeks. It's a Wednesday, Wednesday about like three o'clock. Right after I get off work, I'll drive over there and start physical therapy. I'll be documenting that as well. That'll be part of this and explain some of the exercises and things like that. Um, but it, everyone's physical therapy is, is custom planned to the activities you partake in. If you are not an athlete and you just tore your Achilles somehow, you're not going to be going through a very athletic style of physical therapy. I'm an athlete, always have been, already know it's going to hurt, already know it's going to be painful, already know I'm going to be challenged, and it's going to be custom to the sport I play. It does me no good to be, go to a physical therapist and be trained like a football player, I don't play football. I play basketball, I play tennis, I play soccer, occasionally volleyball. So it'll be custom to me. The frequency we'll discuss when I get to physical therapy. I don't know if it's two days a week, like when I tore my PTFL and my CFL on my ankle during the pandemic, it was two days a week for about an hour and a half each session to get that stability back. Going forward, I have a few things that I'll be using. Um, one of them is, of course, film study. I'll still be watching film and going over different things, studying the biomechanics of the movements for basketball, as well as other people's tapes so I can win. But I have some other supplies that I'll be using to help me with my training while I'm technically not playing the sport, and they are. So here's item one, Bella Chill. She likes to Bella Chill. This is a massage ball. It has like um, little pegs on it. It helps stimulate your feet. So I'll be using this to stimulate the bottoms of my feet and roll out my uh, fascia in the bottom of my foot so I don't get like tight feet because that can be painful in and of itself. The next thing and shameless plug because I am an affiliate of indelab.tv. Go check them out. And as always, go use my discount code Chris Can Hoop for $5 off of your order. But here is the silent ball. This is the 2.0. Right, it's a completely silent basketball. I dribble it in here quite frequently when I can, when I have time. The 3.0 just dropped. It's durable for outdoors. This one probably is not as much because this is the foam version. But the 3.0 has like a little sheath around it to help durability for outdoors so you don't have people complaining that you're dribbling outside at night. They have multiple deals going on. So instead of just getting the one ball for the certain price, you can get like two or three for a bundle deal. 
And that'll help you if you need to do double time or work on both hands or uh, ball manipulation drills, which I'll be dropping a workout on ball manipulation for beginners coming soon. But I'll definitely be using this to practice my handles and things like it bounces pretty well. I'm on the third floor and it's pretty silent. Uh, we tested it out. You can't really hear anything from downstairs. So that's a good thing. That's just some of the things I'll be using to further my skills while I'm not really mobile. Another thing will be coming in tomorrow. That's a weight vest. Um, that way I'm technically loading the tendon without loading the tendon. I'm just adding more weight to myself. Uh, I, I have consulted with my doctor to be able to do that. Disclaimer, again, always make sure with your doctor that you are able to do certain things. Do not try to do them just because you saw someone else do them. It's probably the dumbest thing you can do. It'll overstretch the tendon or tear it again and you'll have to get surgery again. Not the path you probably want to take. Speaking of surgery, the scar is pretty much almost healed. Um, except for when you get down to that little accordion part of your heel where it scrunches and things like that towards the toward the heel um that part is still like a a little bit of scarring just mostly because of how you have your foot you know when it's pointed down like that it's scrunched up and then as time goes on and you get out of those wedges which we'll talk about in a later clip it starts to spread out and so it, it's like Cracking, rehealing, cracking, rehealing. Wedges are gone for those of you who asked. And here's the clip explaining those wedges. So this right here is the wedges that were inside the boot immediately after I took the cast off. So these progressively changed the angle of my foot. So having the two wedges gives it that angle so the tendon is closer together um, to be able to uh, let the tendon heal together faster. And then last week I took this bottom one off get that out of here so my foot was a little bit flatter in the boot um, and then today I got clear to take all of them out so it's just flat boot it's at a 90 degree angle um, and yeah so yeah there, that's pretty much all the updates it is a huge change from week two where I had to do weight bearing with the crutches going into week five I'll still be in the boot but I'll be easing into shoes so you'll see me walk around normal from now on and then from there it'll be mostly just therapy to get the strength back that quickness explosiveness and then i can start frying y'all over all over again but the journey is not done uh but that that's pretty much it there's not really much i can add because that's it's a custom path to me and um, everyone's experience is different uh, if you do want to invest in some things for your Achilles I don't know man uh, my doctor told me not to try to invest in like the even up shoe thing that creates the so there's no height difference because I'm only gonna be in the boot for another week the scooter only if you feel like you need it like I can go up and down the stairs at my apartment now because I have the boot um, I make sure I wear the boot going up and down the stairs. I don't want to re-tear, make it heal long. I don't want any of that. I, I don't want to have to go through all this again, be in the cast, all, none of that. Okay, the cast is the worst part of it all. Um, but yeah, if you have any more questions or you just want to talk about your injuries down below, feel free to do so. But as always, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. This is a little shorter video because there's really not much I can explain or really much to put into it, any updates. Here's, here's the, the summation of events boot for two weeks a week is almost passed i have one week left in the boot i'll go back into regular shoes not this upcoming week but the week after then i start physical therapy the week i go into my shoes on that wednesday august 14th at 3 p.m i'll be documenting the physical therapy process as well so we can see exactly how this goes and then video schedule uh the video for weeks two and three will drop next week um i have a 1v1 i've already recorded it's somewhere <laughs> i don't know when i'm gonna upload it because i want to upload it when i'm able to like move around and things like that but that's also in the vault i have the little like side interview for the thing about the achilles um this is week four so this will come out in a few weeks um and yeah reactions they'll come when I, when they come i'm not really in the mood to do them because uh, i have a, a bunch of content i can get from the achilles issue going on and then training to get back into basketball shape not because i'm out of shape but because like obviously i have no strength in my leg um yeah it, it it's it's been a ride but i have a great support system great medical team working with me so i appreciate all of them and that's all i got for you bro like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. We'll see you next week. Previously on Dragon Balls. <laughs> Flashback. One week later.